All right, God bless y'all. Um, another beautiful day. No, I, I didn't go fishing today. Today I'm sitting here at the house, but as it was coming to mind to review my trip yesterday um, and see what I could learn from it, came to mind that sure that with you all. So, oh, one of the things that messed up on my boat here several weeks ago, uh, I had an old uh, Lawrence finder, which was a, um, just to be honest with you, it was a very old unit, probably 20 years old. I was blessed to have it, traded a rod for it. Um, honestly, the buddy of mine just gave it to me pretty much and I gave him the rod, but we called it a trade. Um, and it's nice to have friends that way. Well, this time, when this one messed up, I, I was just going to get a basic unit. But um, Lord blessed me through a pretty interesting situation. And uh, believe it or not, my wife taught me into buying this unit. And I guess you heard me correctly. Uh, my wife taught me into buying this unit. Uh, my wife was concerned about me being out fishing by myself. Uh, she was considered about... Uh, me been out in all different types of weathers. Uh, you can see through most of my videos. If you know me long enough, you know that weather really doesn't bother me too much. Um, but the Lord blessed me through her, and uh, I was able to go to uh, Cabela's. It's pretty close to me. They were having a sale, so I got a Garmin Depth Finder, and the Garmin Depth Finder that I have, and I was blessed with to get, is a uh, nine three. SV, which means it does have the side view, which is totally different to me. Uh, it has a touch screen. It's got all these fancy gadgets that I don't even know what half of them are. But um, I used to use my old depth finder a lot, not necessarily for the side view, down view, and all those other things. I used it a lot in part of my fishing. So I was getting ready to come out here to the boat and review the map that I had, which I can actually do it from my phone, but I haven't loaded that part up yet. That's how fancy these things are anymore. Um, so for years, I just used my old unit. This is gonna be a new unit, definitely for me to use. And yes, I installed it at my console. I'll flip the screen around here a little bit so that you can see a little more, more about the detail and everything I'm talking about. But um, it's just a huge blessing to me. And I thought when I was out here going through my trip yesterday, and going through some of the things where I was and different places where I caught fish. I figured I'd walk you all through that. And maybe, I know a lot of you asked the question, you know, how do I wind up running into so many fish throughout the day? Um, especially on a big, huge lake like Cumberland. Um, number one, I'm going to tell you, and you're always going to hear this first. Um, I happen to know the man who created all these fish, and his name's Jesus. That's my number one reason. Number two reason is because over the years he has taught me how to observe and how to learn from my experiences. So this is one tool that I use um, to learn and to do what's called pattern fish. Pattern fishing is basically, and on a lake like Lake Cumberland, it's usually fairly easy to do. It means I caught them on this bank this way. If I find different banks that look similar, I should be able to duplicate that pattern. Is it 100% always going to work? No. But you'll be amazed what you'll learn just from reviewing little details like I'm going to show you here in just a minute. I figured it would help you all. So anyway, uh, I'm going to turn the video around so that you can watch the screen and everything with me. All right, so this is me flipping the phone around uh, while we're recording. And this is my Garmin unit that I have, I already have it switched around to the map mode. Uh, I can zoom out and zoom in just with my fingers. Um, so I can zoom back into the map however I want to. Um, just a neat little feature that's on this particular unit, okay? So we're gonna pick a section of bank here. Now that I want you to know this right off the bat before we get started. This is not where I was fishing yesterday. Okay, this is this is this is not where I was catching the fish. Um, it's not that I'm not showing you that because I don't want to show people where I'm fishing, but I don't want everybody to show up and be fighting over spots and 
everything else because honestly the location in the map itself doesn't matter as much in pattern fishing as it does you learn the lake that day okay this is something that i have learned throughout my life but i, did, I wasn't able to have the tools to do it and now that the lord has blessed me with the tools to do it it definitely makes it a lot easier okay um so pattern fishing so basically what we do you know let's take this right here for example uh, this is just a little cove right here um right off of the main lake so your main your main lake is actually this big stretch right here and as you can see it shows road beds and everything in different ways but what we're going what i'm going to try to go over with you now and there's plenty of people out there that are a whole lot smarter at this than me uh, so this is definitely an entry grade but this is just how my mind works this is what i look for so say for instance you know um we're going down the main lake and we have been fishing this stretch right here okay so as we're going along um we go into this pocket and we don't get a bite we come out of this pocket and we go up and right into this first little section here say we catch a fish so what do we do the uh, first thing we're going to do of course your average person and and that's fine if that's you uh average person is going to pull up to that spot you're going to catch a fish and what's it what we're going to do we're going to get all excited we're going to put the fish back in the water and off we go we keep going down the bank right well um what if you go another five feet and you catch another fish and if both of those fish you catch are keeper size doesn't matter small mouth large mouth spotted bass either way what if you catch another one within just a few minutes and it's same size or bigger um, average person we put the fish in the live well we high five we take a picture we may put it back in the water we keep on going and we keep right on going and then we wonder you know the next time we go fishing man i came down this bank the last time and i thought it was somewhere here close but i don't remember exactly where it was well, here's what i'm going to tell you it makes a bigger it makes a bigger issue than you realize when you're first going down there with whatever unit you have okay i understand not all of us are going to have this unit yours is going to look different probably yours may not have all these depths it's just going to have just a plain blue and that's where i am if possible you need to put you a waypoint right there on that section where you caught that fish why because if i caught a fish later on i want to go back and i want to find out what's common about that spot the first time you do this it probably ain't going to be a big deal but i'm going to tell you right now as time goes on and you start saving these little waypoints everywhere it's going to make a bigger difference than you realize why because there may not always be fish on that one but you'll start to realize that places that you mark have similar if you start to try to figure out what's similar between those two spots it just might surprise you what's similar okay you may look at something simple as hey you know what everywhere that thing connects so look right here so say for instance we came through here and we caught a fish there okay we went all the way around this corner we didn't catch anything because look again what it's doing it's going from two feet to 102. That means it's a long stretched out, it just drops off, okay? Now there may be timber, there may be something there, but just by looking at the map, I don't see anything that draws my attention. What I do see that draws my attention is this right here. See how this right here, this riverbed, it cuts real close. This is 12 feet of water. That draws my attention. Why? Because you see this little thing right here, how it stair steps? We'll try to zoom in on it a little bit see right there where those lines are and it goes from 13 to 37 and it starts dropping off there's a flat here next to it yes it's deep water here but this actually has a little stair step right in there okay that draws my attention and if i come through there and i catch a fish then i'm going to wonder i wonder where else i can go that has that same type of thing well if i'm just looking at my map what i see right off the bat is this other point right here. So there's two things in common. If I catch a fish here and I sit down and I mark it as a waypoint, and then I come over here 
and I see this one here, and I catch a fish on that waypoint, where am I catching most of my fish? Most of my fish, I'm number one catching on points. But I'm, another similarity they have is that underwater submerged, like it says there, that submerged riverbed is passing close to both of them. Meaning that the old river used to run right across through those. So those are little things that you look for to, to catch fish. A lot of people don't realize it. A lot of people just go down the bank and they just catch fish and that's it. And there's nothing wrong with that, but there's little bitty reasons why this happens. I'm gonna see if it'll load up here and I'm gonna show you one more little stretch that's very interesting. Okay, and like I said, these aren't the places where I fished yesterday, but that's just, this is just examples of what I'm using, okay? So, this section right here of the lake, okay? I don't remember ever going to this part right here, but it says right there, Jamestown. So we're gonna use this as an example, okay? There are times on Cumberland to where if you go into these big creeks, okay? You can spend a lot of time in those big creeks. I like those when it's muddier water and in the springtime. Um, honestly, in the summertime, I like Main Lake. But Main Lake, when somebody tells you Main Lake, not just Main Lakes on these big points, main lake like this small spot right here like this little area right here see how this has some 40 foot and you have to actually drive to these places to make sure but these little spots right here it amazes me how you'll go down a bank and the fish will be caught up into a stretch like this right here give it a second load up that right there looks flat but when you actually go to the lake there'll be like a little 10 foot section with gravel in it and then it'll go back to regular rock and that gravel will go all the way down or there'll be two or three trees that have fallen and they're right in here in the main stretch all of a sudden for some reason that draws those fish into those places same technique i use in the winter time same technique i use in the summertime i love starting my day of fishing on points there's days that I may go back into some of these smaller cuts just to see if there's a fish or two in there. But you'll be amazed at how many times I do that, especially if you're fishing during the daytime and there's no fish in there. Now the evening, when you go in there years ago, sure, they'd be fishing those cuts. But during the daytime, they pull out and they would stay on these main lakes. Early in that last video I shared, you see me on a couple points to where I would go over and I would throw in and I would catch a fish, take my time, unload the fish, take the fish off, take a picture, put him back in. And where would I go? Would I just go straight down the bank and keep going? No, I would turn right back around to that point and I would throw back in there again. Why? Because in my mind, there's a reason why that fish was there. Especially like the little spotted bass you saw me catch and he's spitting up bait fish. That means that there's a good chance that if I pull up to a point like this, and I catch a fish or two, and he's spitting up bait fish, that means there's a school of bait fish somewhere close. And guess what? Those fish, we can, we can name a thousand reasons where they might be there, but number one reason they're usually on those areas is they know that bait's nearby. Um, that's just some of the little tips though, that's some of the little things that I do. I, I don't just, when I catch a fish, I usually, if it's a little, 11 12 inch fish sure i may go ahead and put it back in the water and just keep going down the bank after i cast there two or three more times especially if it's a tree point something that's drawing attention to those fish if i don't catch one then i'll keep going down the bank if i feel like there's still something there let's say i throw a top water and i have one swirl on it i throw it again i catch one then I may set a second or two and I may spend a little bit of time throwing a Ned rig or something on there. If I don't get a bite, then I go on to the next point. There are certain days that I won't fish all this stretch right here. Not if it's a real long one. Now this one here, it I don't know how wide this one is, but it may be 50 feet. Well, I may fish that flat, I may fish that, um, that bank right there. If it's 50 foot long and just a bluff wall, then I may go ahead and fish that section there. Why? Because I'm testing the theory, okay, on the, on the bluffs or on the, on the points. Sometimes you'll be surprised. They're not on the points, 
they're in the middle of the blush. Why? Because if you look at the contour, okay, look at this here, how it's set up. A fish could very easily live right here between these two points. And the reason why is because there's 72 feet worth of water right there, 34 here, and then, uh-oh, something changes because this is five and this is 12. You see these lines right here, how close they are to each other? That means that there's little stair steps, but they're close together. When you see them spread out like this over here, going back into this little pocket, that means that it, it, it tapers off, but it tapers off gradually. This is a quicker drop off. <laughs> In the summertime, those fish look for being efficient. They're going to go up and down as quickly as possible so they can go back to feeding like they were. Sorry for putting my finger back in the way. Uh, it's kind of different doing this, but that's the whole reason why you go through and when you catch a fish, like I said, you don't have to do it every fish because most of us, if we do have a system, you, you don't have 5,000 gigabytes to store everything. But when you catch a fish that's a decent sized one, put your waypoint. If you don't want to take the time that day to look at it, just look at the bank and go on. When you get home, pull up your map on your phone, on your GPS, and look back through that bank and just wonder, I wonder why. And then you might be surprised later on after the excitement of catching the fish, after you had the wind blowing 20 mile an hour and you barely got that fish in the boat before you were up on the bank. Later on when you're at home, you're gonna go through and you're gonna be like, man, I didn't realize it, but most of those fish, they were on the points. Or I didn't realize it, but every fish I caught was in between the two points. Man, I didn't realize it, but every one of them come on a secondary point. That's where I put, that's where I put my waypoints at. I didn't realize it, but that's where it was. Okay, so it's just, just another tool, just another thing. Um, my favorite thing, of course, is just the GPS period, but the ability that we have and we spend money on these units, which, uh, like I said, I was blessed to just get one and this will probably be my unit until the good Lord Jesus takes me home or that's my plan. Um, hopefully this is gonna last me or I won't have to get another one. Um, but that's just one of the many tools that a system like this has that uh, I just thought, you know, this is what I'm going to do anyway. I'm going to come out here and go through my spots. So I figured I would talk you all through a little bit. Um, I'm sure this is a little bit longer than um, most of you probably want to sit down and watch. But for some of you, it may be something that may help you, may bless you. But if you have questions and you want to message me sometime, I don't care a bit to try to help you walk through any process that you have. Because to me, the goal is to go out and enjoy God's creation and we can help each other do that, then that's even better. Um, if you have a system like this and you know little tricks and stuff that you don't see me doing or mention, you're more than welcome to put a comment below and say, hey, I've done this or I tried that. Um, there's all kind of customizations with this system. You can go in and... Uh, I'll do one little waypoint here just to kind of include it in the video. Just to kind of show you, so if I was to go to this point right here and I wanted to make a waypoint, then all I do is just touch the screen. I come over here to this side, I've got create waypoint. Okay, so I've already created the waypoint. Okay, I want to go in and look at that. Okay, so it gives me my little fish. This is what I choose for a marker. It's got my seven in it, which is the Lord's number. That's the one that I pick for every fish that I catch because I thank Jesus for every fish that I catch. That's just my other little way of doing that. Uh, it gives me all the date and everything when I put it there. And then I can go over here and I can edit waypoint. And I can literally go in here and type in the water temperature. I can type in, uh, I can give it a different name if I want to. I can type in the depth that I was actually on. I can put a little comment, you know, what I, I could put maybe what bait I caught it on there. I could, and all you have to do is just touch it. I could go in here and type in whatever I want to, you know. Uh, say I caught it on a Ned, then I type in Ned, type over here, done. Okay, it takes me back. Now we see it's got Ned. So we got depth. So we're gonna go over here and say that, hey, I think I caught it in five feet, you know, uh, not 5,000 feet, but. Five feet, okay, so done. 
about five feet. Water temperature, uh, yesterday it was 82. Uh, once again, not 182, clear. So we're gonna say, So we got 82 degrees. We'll come over here and we're going to hit done. Okay, so now we've got all of our information laid out there. We've got our name of it. We're just going to call it 16. Our depth of it, uh, we could say right there. If we wanted to, we can change this right here. And say, for instance, let's just do this. Uh, we're going to change the number. So we're going to change the number on it. And we're going to put three... letter LB so three largemouth bass we're gonna set the three pound largemouth bass okay so we're gonna go here to done all right now all my information is in there so three pound five Ned and there we go we got all the information in there so what are we gonna do now we're gonna go back we're gonna hit the back button okay so see it's got all of our name and all of our information on there so we're gonna go back so look what it says on our screen on our screen, every time we drive past that now, we'll move the cursor up a little bit, okay? It's got it small right there, but if I go and touch on it, it shows me a three pound bass. If I click on this information button, it's going to give me even more information, okay? So pretty neat little tool. Um, why am I doing all that? Because like I said, over time, if you store this, you drive down the lake and you go past, and you go past, and you go past, eventually you won't remember everything that you always caught fish on. If you're fishing on a smaller lake, you can, but if you're fishing on a bigger lake, it's hard to remember all those details. Over time, you may actually build yourself up a little pattern in the area that you're fishing. And you're like, you know what? I catch most of my fish, you know, during the summer, which that's something we get a typed in the information too. It's just a neat little tool. It's something else to do. Uh, when we get them, a lot of times we get them because the name on them, we get them because our buddies have them, we get them for all these different reasons. But these are actually tools, no different than your rod and reels, that will help you just fish a little bit easier. There's so many other things on this, but this is just something that I thought, I'm gonna go out here to the boat and do anyway. I thought maybe it would help somebody out. Um, you may not have this type of system and you think, look, this video is no good to me, you know, I, uh, I don't have any use for all this stuff. And if you don't, then give me just a second and I'm gonna put in a special little section just for you, okay? God bless you all. We'll be back here in just a second. All right, so we're back again. So um, one of the things that we're gonna look at on here, um, say I don't have a GPS, you're that guy, I'm in a kayak, I, I don't have all these fancy gadgets. What, what am I supposed to do? You wanna help people catch fish, how do you help me catch fish? Well, if you have a cell phone and you have Google Maps, okay? Most of us have Google Maps on our, um, on our cell phones. If you do, I already have mine programmed in. So what do you do? I can go to Google Maps and it's gonna show you, I put in Cumberland and Conley they just gave me a generalization of the map, okay? If you do this while your location setting is on, it'll actually show you a blue dot to wherever you are. Now, in case you wonder, doesn't that bank look a lot like the bank that we're in? Because all I did was just go to Google Maps, okay? And now I've zoomed in a little bit. So now we're basically looking at the same area, but now we're looking on here. So what you can actually do is you can go in with your edit tool on your phone. You can screenshot the map that you're on. This is what I did before I got this other unit, before I even had my other unit that I traded for that other guy. You can actually go on your phone and take your picture and edit it and draw little lines and X's of about reasons where, or areas that you think that you uh, caught fish at. So it's still possible, you're still able to do it. Uh, is it going to be as efficient, as inconvenient as it is a system like this, like this Garmin that I have? Probably not. 
But is it possible to do? Yes, it is. If you have a lake that you go to a lot, I guarantee you, you go to Google and pull up that lake, especially if you live here in the United States. You can probably pull up and zoom into that lake and you can see all kinds of things in that lake. There's different maps that you can even get for your phone. That way you can actually see where you're at. You can, now the bad thing is, is that GPS on your map on your phone doesn't work as efficient because it all depends on service signals. So let me switch the view around and I'll finish talking to you about this here in just a second. All right. So, hope that was helpful to you. Um, like I said, it, it's not a matter of who has the equipment, who doesn't have the equipment. Um, all of us, like I said, we're all out there just try to have fun, try to catch fish. Um, is catching fish an exact science? No, it's not. Uh, you may go out there today. I could I could probably give you the exact spots that I went out and caught fish yesterday. And two weeks from now, I'll go out to those same spots because I have them marked as waypoints. There may not be fish there. Okay. But during that day, a lot of times, most of the fish are doing the same thing. Does that mean all of them are going to hit your topwater bait? No, it doesn't. Does that mean that all of them are going to be on points? No, it doesn't. You may run into that occasional fish here and there. And that's why, even though I'm running a pattern, say I catch two or three nice fish on a point right after another point, well, I'm gonna keep fishing points that day. But does that mean that if I go through a 50, 60 foot stretch and I see that, hey, 75 feet up there is another point, am I gonna get in my boat, start my motor up, drive down there? Sometimes no, sometimes I'm just gonna fish down this bank because it looks good. And then all of a sudden I run into two five pound fish and I'm like wow they weren't even on the points they were in the middle of the points so then what am I going to do I'm going to pull up to the next point and take my time but am I going to hop to the next point probably not I'm probably going to fish down that stretch just a little bit to see if I can get fish now like I said I'm no expert I'm just a regular ordinary guy, ordinary guy like all of you um, I have been blessed to spend a few more hours me on the water than some of you some of you may have spent more hours on the water than me. Uh, I've only owned the boat that I have right now for about a year. I, I fished tournaments for several years. I had a different boat, little local tournaments. Um, I went with other buddies and we fished big, small, regular tournaments and spent a lot of time on the water with them as well. So all of this is just things that I've gathered over the years. And um, people are just usually asking me, man, how do you... How do you do that? How do you go through the day? It seems like I spend all day in one spot. You'd probably be surprised at how much water I cover, but you also probably be surprised how I try to cover the water efficiently. I try to pattern fish is what I do more than anything. To me, if one of them's doing it, that's, that's something. If two of them's doing it and they're both keepers, there's something to this. If there's a third one, then I need to pay attention. Something was different about this bank. What what draw those fish to here? And like I said, that usually turns out to be uh, a successful day. Um, anyway, hope this blesses you. Hope this helps you. Hope it doesn't confuse anybody. I hope it actually gives a little bit of help. Um, if you have questions about it, message me. If you have questions about the Garmin unit and all the things that it does, I'm probably not the guy to ask because I'm learning as I go as well. There's a few tools on there that I've been learning. This is just one of them that I've seen that especially yesterday and other trips that I've been on um, before I had this unit that just GPS units in general helped me with. This one just makes it a whole lot easier. Um, anyway, um, I'm very blessed, very blessed to go period. Very blessed to have friends that taught me over the years very blessed to have friends that we share back and forth information and try to help each other out. Uh, it's my main purpose for even this video right here. And most of them that I do is just to share the information. Hopefully we can all help. You all may run into something different. Um, and that's fine. You want to share it with me? You're more than welcome to. Anyway, hope this helps you all. I don't want to stretch this out any more further than it is, but God bless you all. Thank you all very much for watching the video. Thank you very much for sharing the video. Don't forget, Jesus loves you. Y'all have a wonderful day.